Hello, I'm Max and this is Uniquely Made. In today's video I'm going to replace the ball bearings that are in the spindle assembly right now with roller bearings. These are roller bearings. As you can see, they have a conical shape to them and can fall apart pretty easily. But in the other directions they are very, very strong. And this allows it to handle higher axial loads. Currently there are ball bearings installed in the spindle assembly. So to replace them I'm going to have to take out the entire Z assembly. I'm going to do the boring parts off camera. If you want to see how I do that anyway, you can check out my last video, which I'm going to link down below and in one of the corners. And here's the main spindle assembly. You can see I already took off the covers and here you can see the old ball bearings that we want to replace. And in here is the gear train. What I have to do now is to take off this axis to then be able to take out the spindle. Ideally you would press this out but I'm going to put it in the vise and tap it out with a hammer and some aluminium on top. That's that done. I can remove I can remove these gears as well. So now the last thing to do is to press out the spindle and once again I don't have a press so I'm gonna use the hammer and some soft material. As you hopefully saw, I removed the shaft from the housing, the bearings are also removed. These are honestly okay, but there is a pretty big dent here and I also just want to have an excuse to try out roller bearings to be honest. Now these only work in one direction, as you can see the other way, they fall out very easily. So you need to use them in pairs. And for the next step I'm going to have to insert this part here and the other one on the other side of course and these parts have to be press fit onto the shaft. And I could probably force that, but since everything's apart now, I can put the shaft and these two parts in the freezer, and that should shrink them just a tiny bit, and with that hopefully it'll go a lot smoother. So I'll put them in for a few hours, maybe two or three hours, and then I'll try it. Okay, about two hours have passed. These are nice and cool. I'm going to start by pressing the first bearing half into the bore. And I have to hurry up a bit because obviously as they thaw, they expand again. Make sure it's the right way up. Yes. One side done. Alright, second side done. That went better than expected. Now I have to get this over here. And I think I'm gonna have to use my vise again. We're back here, I have to install the shaft, I have to install all the gears on the shaft and then I can cap it off on the other side with the other half of the bearing. Okay, now the hard part, I have to press this onto here. And I'm not entirely sure how. I think I'm going to go back to the, to the vise. Hmm. 
I'm sorry you didn't get to see the end. As you may have noticed, I couldn't quite get it together and I started to panic, so I finished it off camera. Because I was afraid it was going to heat up too fast and I wouldn't be able to get it and not take it apart and la la la, I did manage to get it together. So it's seated nicely here and it's nicely seated here as well. And what worked for me in the end was to use the actual collet that is also normally used on top. And then I used one of the old bearings here and then some aluminium on top and then I gently tapped it into place while standing on my workbench so that the face of the spindle wouldn't get damaged. And that worked really well. You can also see that it still turns quite well, which is nice. There is already very little play here, but we're going to have to dial it in later by tightening this nut on top here. Two things I have to do now. The first one is, these bearings are a tiny bit taller than the original bearings. So you can see here, maybe you can see that, this key is now slightly covered by the bearing. So I'm going to have to cut a tiny bit off the key and these bearings need to be lubricated. I really should have lubricated this before I put it together, but I got excited and <laughs> you know, I put it together hastily. But this is bearing grease. If you're in Germany, you can read this. Otherwise, it's bearing grease. It was relatively cheap. And luckily, these bearings are open on the top and that is accessible from both sides. So if I ever have to re-grease them, I can do it very easily. Yeah, I definitely should have done this before. But, you know, you learn. I'm just trying to force some in between the joints and then when it spins it should even out relatively quickly. Yeah, I, can, I can already see it evening out. That shouldn't be an issue. I'm going to put the rest of it back together off camera because it's not that interesting. And I'm going to meet you back once the head is installed so we can preload the bearings and see if it makes any difference. Everything is installed again, and first, the good news, it still turns. So, you know, that's really good. I had my doubts, or at least my worries, but yeah, that, that actually feels very good, and there is no, like, up and down play. But still, we have to adjust the tension on these roller bearings, because they need a very specific amount of preload, where it's tight enough so there's no movement, but not too tight where there is too much friction and they heat up. So I'm gonna put the sleeve back on again. Also I shortened the key. I didn't show that, but I just shortened it by like two or three millimeters. Now we can tension it with this nut and this left-handed thread. And each time I get a tiny bit confused because it's unnatural. Tighten it a lot, basically. Now it's very hard to turn. Actually, it's kind of okay. I think what's happening is, is the shaft is a tiny bit too thick, so it's very hard to actually press down these bearings. So let me put an indicator in the bottom of the shaft and see if we get any movement in this direction. Actually showing you the dial indicator in this direction doesn't really make any sense since there's enough flex in the machine itself that any force here will give you an indicator reading. But I did go back and tighten it a whole bunch more with you know a bit of extra force that actually tightened fairly well. And I tightened it to a point where it was just too tight to turn. I turned it back a slight amount and then let it run for a bit. And I think it settled on a good amount now. So I'm going to turn this mill on and you can see the run out. So that's about 1.5 hundredths of a millimeter, which is the exact same number as it was before. But that already is good, that means I didn't screw anything up with the shaft or the spindle. And the bearings are well aligned. Where this should shine is heavy loads, like from a face mill. 
So I'm going to set up this big cutter here and take a pass. So what you're seeing here is a 50 millimeter facing mill and a block of aluminium and I'm going to take about half millimeter off. So here you can see the result of the cut. You can see that the surface quality is okay. It's not like a mirror finish, but I am very happy with it. And I think with the right RPM, this would have worked a lot better. The important part here is I didn't hear any chatter. And you can also see that in the milling passes here, there is almost no chatter marks here. So I think that already proves that the update was worth it because before I did hear and see chatter with the other bearings. And that's it for me for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm very happy with the upgrade. It might only be a placebo effect, but I'll take it. <laughs> if you have any other suggestions for updates or upgrades, let me know. Until next time, have a great day.